short key facts about the center since it started in 2010 <coughs> about, uh, some 45 different projects all based on the co-production approach where practitioners and researchers produce knowledge jointly we have some 150 publications from the work uh, at this very moment but there are some hundred more coming uh, this and uh, next year because we are now into a more sort of the production phase of, of, uh, of the program. Uh, a yearly turnover of approximately 8 million Swedish crowns. Uh, part of this is cash funding and, and parts of it is uh, in-kind contributions, especially from, from the different uh, public organizations involved. And uh, just to sum up, um, 
the urban research uh, seminar that we are having today is, is uh, uh, a series of seminars that we are having within the centre where, where we try to, to focus on, on a specific question linked to one of our projects and where we invite uh, uh, specialists from, from other uh, institutes and, and uh, universities in other countries. And uh, we are a number of researchers involved within the centre because urban issues is really a, a, a broad question. So, so just to give you a, a picture of, of, uh, of all the different disciplines that are involved, this is uh, a list of, of uh, different disciplines involved at the moment in our projects. And if you want to read more about the projects <coughs> and, and uh, the places where we are working, please visit our website. Uh, you can find a lot of information. So just a short update on Mr. Urban Futures and uh, welcome to all of you and to, to Derek. Well, um, 
but we also have almost the activist uh, side. So, in general, we describe ourselves as scientists. So, we're scientists with an activist. <coughs> so this is uh, 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 to make clear where I stand. So, I record a couple of key messages. So, our starting point, uh, 10, 15 years ago, in, in starting to think about sustainability transitions was the consensus in at least the academic world, but also, in, uh, you could say, in the civil society, that we are facing urgent sustainability issues that we are unable to fundamentally address, and that will inevitably lead to disturbance, to conflict, to maybe chaos even, um, and we are increasingly seeing the evidence that we are um, in this period of disruption. Um, that brings along chaos, but also the opportunity for um, large-scale innovation, social innovation. I will get back to that. But that requires really a new kind of approach. So it's not coming from uh, top-down policies alone. The market is not delivering it. It's not only about technological innovation, um, it's maybe about all of these elements and maybe even more. But we're not really sure uh, where to look for it. And interestingly, and I'll get to that in the end of the presentations, we use the metaphor of the eye of the storm. You see a lot of institutions and universities are, are particular examples of that, that uh, act like they're disconnected from what's happening with turbulence in society and uh, um, sort of uh, uh, act like they can still uh, live in the past. While at the same time they could, uh, by their position, have a huge impact on um, development of society, on the course of transitions. I'll get back to that. So transitions in practice, uh, uh, you know these kind of figures uh, if you're in the sustainability <coughs> field. Basically it's the message I, I just said. All the indicators are, are in the red, and um, if you look back to the Club of Rome uh, reports and, and uh, the models they made, basically we're, we're still on the worst case scenario. And um, we had some interesting uh, discussions with uh, people that are involved from the early stages in this, this whole discourse of sustainable development. And you see this huge paradox on the one hand having global impact, everybody's talking about sustainability, impact on all levels, global scale tension, uh, we have hugely successful waves of environmental policy, um, we have all these market incentives, uh, but on the aggregated scale we're, we're moving in the wrong direction. So we're making systems more efficient, we're trying to make things less bad, but in the meantime there still continues demographic and economic growth. And you know all this, but this is inevitably somewhere pushing a boundary uh, where things become critical. Um, and increasingly we're seeing the signals of this. That's the ecological point of view, you can also have a socio-economic point of view. Then you talk about the distribution of wealth and resources and the access to it. And of course, from that perspective, from a historical perspective, we also know that there's an increasing chance that there will be conflicts in terms of access to resources, you will have competition of resources, and that's exactly what we're seeing. You will have social unrest and social conflicts because of the uh, division or distribution of wealth and resources. So we all know this as experts. And uh, this has been uh, set and signaled for decades already, but it's not changing. Um, but what it is causing, and this is what we call in the transition uh, uh, framework or thinking, the symptoms of unsustainability, it's causing these crises. And you now have a flooding in the Balkan, you can uh, point at uh, uh, Fukushima, you can point at droughts, um, all sorts of calamities. Actually, this is, this is an old one from 10 years ago, but it's still relevant, or relevant again. Um, for us, they are signals of the unsustainability um, of the way that we have organized our social systems and our economies. 
but our traditional societal and political response is to try to solve these problems with ad <coughs> hoc measures. So what do we do in terms of congestion? This was first a, a two-lane road, and over time we started to expand the road because of the traffic jams, but they don't go away. So <coughs> reinforcing the system, you might say, and the wider the road gets, the more uh, cars are drawn to it. And you could have a similar narrative for most of these kind of accidents that we react to them by trying to solve them. In the Netherlands, typically, we were uh, creating bigger and bigger dikes in answer to floods. So engineering our way out of the problem. And then at a certain point, we came to the conclusion that there is a, 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 a trade-off between a higher dike and the kind of safety you can uh, uh, deliver. So what happened is we tried to figure out a new way. And increasingly, this is what you see, that these calamities, they trigger sort of the debate on how do we move from improving the existing to really inherently more sustainable solutions. Um, and, and this is why I said we're living in a more fundamental period of change, because I can point at a lot of examples, and I will mention a few, um, <coughs> where this currently dominant uh, way of organizing society, which really has been sort of established over the last 